Emily's life had always been about striving for a better future. From a young age, her parents, who hadn't completed high school, worked tirelessly to save for her college fund. They believed that education was the key to a brighter life, and Emily was determined to honor their sacrifices. She excelled in high school, her efforts culminating in an acceptance letter to study investment management at a prestigious university. The news brought tears of joy to everyone. Emily's college days were filled with a whirlwind of academic demands and a part-time tutoring job to supplement her income. It was during this time that she met Mark. Mark, a year her junior, struggled with the coursework. He often sought Emily's help, confessing, I just don't get this stuff. She encouraged him to approach the material in smaller chunks, not trying to absorb it all at once. Mark was a friendly and easygoing person, and his quick smile made their late-night study sessions more enjoyable. They found common ground, discussing everything from music to their favorite TV shows. Gradually, their study sessions transformed into coffee dates and movie nights. At a college party one night, Mark, half-joking, said, I've always wondered why someone as smart as you hangs out with a dunce like me. Emily responded with a playful jab, guess I have a thing for lost causes. They laughed, and something about that night felt different. Perhaps it was the party atmosphere or the right amount of beer, but Emily found herself looking at Mark in a new light. As they stumbled out of the party, leaning on each other, Mark slurred, so, what do you say? Want to make this a regular thing? His words were slightly intoxicated, but his eyes held a seriousness that surprised Emily. She laughed, her sound echoing in the quiet night. Are you asking me out? Mark, she asked. Yeah, I guess I am, he replied, his tone challenging, as if daring her to say no. All right, you've got yourself a deal, Emily said, and they shook on it, sealing their goofy pact with a high five that turned into handholding as they walked. Their relationship felt natural and comfortable. They finished college together, Emily with her degree that was meant to open doors, and Mark relieved to be done. Their bond wasn't just about love, it was built on a deep friendship, the kind you don't find every day. After their marriage, Emily's career took off. Thanks to her knack for numbers and a bit of hustle, she landed a fantastic job right out of college. The pay was good, and the benefits even better. Mark, however, didn't experience the same luck. He went through job interviews like a pinball, returning home each time increasingly deflated. One evening, Emily came home late to find Mark slumped on the couch, staring blankly at job postings on his laptop. Any luck today, she asked, dropping her bag and kicking off her shoes. He looked up, forcing a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Same old, same old, he sighed. I guess I'm too stupid. Hey, don't talk like that, Emily squeezed his hand, attempting to transfer her optimism. You're just in a rough patch. Look, why don't you take a break from this, and we'll go grab a bite? My treat. Mark closed his laptop with a sigh. Sure, why not? Not like I have any interviews lined up or anything. They ended up at a small diner around the corner, a place they frequented when they first moved in together. As they settled into their usual booth, Mark's mood seemed to lift slightly. The waitress, a middle-aged woman with a no-nonsense attitude, approached them. The usual for you too, she asked, popping her gum. Mark grinned. Yeah, and keep the coffee coming, Judy. It's been one of those days. Coming right up, hun, she shot back with a wink. While they waited for their food, Emily watched Mark play with the sugar packets, lining them up and knocking them down like dominoes. You know, maybe this is a sign, he said suddenly. Maybe I'm not cut out for these corporate gigs. Maybe I should think outside the box. Emily leaned in, curious. Like what? I don't know, something hands-on, something real, not just shuffling papers and pleasing bosses. You'd be great at that, Emily said, meaning every word. You're good with people, Mark. Maybe something in sales? Mark chuckled, his eyes brightening a bit. That might be a good idea. The conversation drifted as their food arrived, but Emily could tell that something had sparked in Mark. For the first time in months, he seemed to be considering possibilities rather than dwelling on his failures. It took a while, but eventually, he landed a position. 
It wasn't his dream job, and the paycheck was nearly half of what Emily was pulling in, but she didn't mind the disparity. She was just glad he had found something. Mark, however, struggled with the situation. He felt the weight of bringing less to the table. I just never thought I'd be the one being supported, he confessed one night, his voice low, almost drowned out by the hum of the microwave in their tiny kitchen. Hey, it's us against the bills, not you against me, Emily tried to reassure him, handing him a beer. We're a team, right? Yeah, a team, he echoed, but his half-smile didn't reach his eyes. Over time, Mark seemed to get used to the arrangement. The burden of paying rent, groceries, and everything in between fell on Emily's shoulders, and she handled it without complaint. She even splurged on him now and then, buying him fancy gadgets and the kind of clothes he wouldn't buy for himself. Mark got comfortable with this arrangement, very comfortable. He started pointing out things in stores, saying, hey, that would look great on me, huh? Emily laughed it off, clouded by love, thinking it was just playful banter between them. Her colleagues at work saw it differently. He's getting a bit too comfortable, don't you think, they'd hint after she shared stories over lunch. Emily shrugged off their concerns, figuring they didn't see the full picture of their marriage. He's been through a rough patch. It's my turn to spoil him a bit, she'd defend him, keeping her tone light. Just when Emily thought they had their lives on a steady track, the unexpected hit them hard. The investment firm where she was making waves suddenly went bankrupt, out of the blue. She came home that day, her head spinning, papers from HR clutched in her shaky hands. Mark, you won't believe what happened, she said as soon as she walked through the door. She was met with the sight of him on the sofa, gaming controller in hand, mid-game. He paused his game and looked up, his brows knitted. What's up, babe? The company, they're done. Bankrupt. I'm jobless. Mark sat up straighter, the seriousness of the situation cutting through their usual homecoming chit-chat. What? But you were just talking about a promotion last week. Yeah. Well, so much for that, Emily tossed the papers on the coffee table, a mix of severance info and legal jargon. Everything's gone to hell just like that. Mark set his controller down and came over to her, his expression a mix of concern and disbelief. Emily, that's, that's crazy. What are you going to do? Emily sank into the couch, the weight of the news anchoring her down. I don't know. I need to start looking, I guess. But who's going to hire someone from a tanked firm? It's like I've got the plague now. Mark rubbed her back, trying to be the rock she needed. You'll find something. You're brilliant. Any company would be lucky to have you. Weeks turned into months, and every interview ended with some version of oh, we'll be in touch, which really meant, don't hold your breath. The rejections piled up, slamming Emily with doubt and worry. One evening, after yet another, thanks, but no thanks, she vented to Mark over dinner. It's like I'm toxic, Mark. Today, one guy actually said, sorry, but we can't risk someone associated with that kind of failure, as if I personally ran the company into the ground. Mark shook his head, stabbing at his food. That's bull. They don't know what they're missing. Yeah. Well, apparently they think they're dodging a bullet, Emily muttered, pushing her own food around her plate. Then the bills started to grow into a monstrous pile that seemed to taunt them from the kitchen counter. Each envelope was a reminder that Emily's savings wouldn't last forever. Mark tried to pick up extra hours, but it wasn't enough to keep up. One night, as Emily was crunching numbers, trying to make sense of their dwindling finances, Mark came into the kitchen, a sheepish look on his face. So, um, about the bills. Emily didn't even look up. What about them? Mark shuffled his feet, a sure sign he was nervous. Well, it's just, you know, I'm not pulling in much. Maybe we should cut back some more. Maybe we could move to a smaller place or sell the car. Emily stared at him, the reality of their situation washing over her in a cold wave. We're really in it, aren't we? Mark nodded, coming over to wrap his arms around her. We'll figure it out, Em. We always do. Weeks of fruitless job hunting ground Emily down, chipping away at her savings and hope. 
The money was running out fast, and Mark, who had grown used to a comfortable life, now shouldered all their bills. This shift brought out a side of him that Emily had never seen before. One night, he exploded. You're just sitting around all day doing nothing, he yelled. I'm out there busting my ass, and for what? To come home to a freeloader? His words stung. Freeloader? Really, Mark? Who do you think kept us a roof over our heads all these years? Emily shot back, her voice sharp with hurt and anger. He just scoffed, shaking his head. Yeah, well, past is past. What are you doing now? Nothing. Emily couldn't believe what she was hearing. This wasn't the man she had married. But before she could gather her thoughts to respond, the real blow came just a few days later. Emily came home early to grab some documents she needed for yet another potential job lead. As she opened the door, she froze. There was Mark in their living room, cozy with a woman Emily had never seen before. She was draped on his arm, laughing up at him as if she owned the place. Mark straightened up, clearing his throat. This is Anna. She's, well, she's going to be my wife. The woman, Anna, looked Emily over with a smug grin. He meets someone young and beautiful if he's going to spend his money, not someone who can't even keep a job. They laughed together, a sound that burned into Emily's memory. She felt her heart shatter, rage and disbelief swirling into a toxic cloud in her chest. Then Mark did the unthinkable. He pulled out a stack of papers from behind him. Here, divorce papers. I think it's time you moved on, Emily. Without saying another word, Emily took the papers. Her hand shook as she signed them, each stroke of the pen severing the last ties she had to the man she once loved. She packed her things, her movements robotic as she zipped up her suitcase. Mark and Anna didn't even pause their celebration. The contrast between their laughter and the tight, painful lump in Emily's throat was too much. Walking out of that apartment, suitcase in hand, felt like stepping into a void. She had no job, no husband, and suddenly, no home. The morning after she left Mark, Emily woke up early, feeling displaced but determined to start over. She had spent the night at a cheap motel, the kind where you pay cash and no one asks questions. She knew she needed a plan, and fast. After a stale coffee and a dry muffin from the motel's vending machine, she walked the streets aimlessly at first. Then she remembered a beauty salon nearby, a place she used to frequent back in better days. The owner, Linda, had always been kind to her. Maybe, just maybe, she had some work available, anything really. Linda was at the counter, her back turned, stocking some shelves. Can I help you, she called out without looking. Linda, it's Emily. I, I was wondering if you had any work available. Anything at all, Emily said, her voice a mix of hope and desperation. Linda turned around, her face lighting up with recognition, then concern. Emily, honey, what happened? You look like you've been through the ringer. Emily sighed, the story spilling out of her, the job loss, Mark's betrayal, the divorce. Linda listened, her expression softening with each word Emily said. Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Let's see what we can do for you. She pondered for a moment, tapping a finger on her lips. You know, I need someone to help manage the front desk, answer phones, schedule appointments. Do you think you could handle that? Emily nodded eagerly. Yes, absolutely. I'd be grateful for any opportunity, Linda. Linda smiled, her warm, reassuring self. Good. Why don't you start tomorrow? We'll figure out the rest as we go. And hey, about a place to stay, the apartment above the shop is empty. It's not much, but it's clean and safe. You can stay there for half the rent until you're back on your feet. Emily was overwhelmed, tears pricking at the corners of her eyes. Linda, I thank you. This means so much to me. None of that now, Linda waved off Emily's thanks. You do the same in my shoes. Let's not make a big deal out of it. Just be here at 8 tomorrow, bright and early. The next few weeks were a blur of learning and adjusting. Linda showed Emily the ropes, and she picked up the nuances of the beauty industry quicker than she thought. 
It was like she was slowly piecing herself back together, finding a new purpose in a place she hadn't expected. Mark, in her old life, seemed like a distant memory, a bad dream that had loosened its grip on her. Emily worked hard, stayed late when needed, and slowly, she began to feel whole again. But it wasn't just about surviving anymore, she was starting to thrive. Linda noticed too. Emily, you've really turned this place around, she said one evening as they were closing up. I'm thinking about expanding, opening another location. What do you think about running this one for me if I do? The offer took Emily's breath away. Really, Linda? Are you serious? Linda chuckled, that hearty sound that always put Emily at ease. Think it over. No rush. As Emily walked up to her little apartment above the shop, she realized that this was her fresh start, her chance to rebuild, not just her career, but her life. Running the beauty salon started to feel like second nature. Every day, she put in all she had, and Linda noticed. One morning, as they were gearing up for another busy day, Linda came in with her usual spark. Morning, M. How's our little empire doing? Linda grinned, checking the schedule, packed with appointments. Booming, Emily replied, flipping through the day's bookings. We might even need to think about hiring more hands soon. That's what I like to hear, Linda said, clapping her hands with excitement. Actually, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today. Emily was curious about the tone in Linda's voice. Linda motioned towards her office. Let's step into my lair for a sec. Once they were settled behind closed doors, Linda leaned forward, all business. Look, Em, you've made this place shine. I've been thinking a lot about how we can grow, not just here, but really expand our reach. Emily felt a mix of nerves and excitement. Are you talking about opening another location? Not just another salon, Em. I'm talking big. I'm planning a whole network of salons, and I want you in on it. Not just as a manager, but as a co-owner. We'd split everything 50 50 Linda's words hit Emily like a wave. Co-owner, she echoed, the weight of the offer sinking in. Yes, Linda nodded firmly. I've seen what you can do, and I trust you. You're ready for this, and I want us to tackle it as partners. What do you say? The possibility of stepping up like this was both thrilling and daunting. Linda, I'm honored. Anne. Yeah, a bit freaked out. Linda laughed, that hearty sound that always put Emily at ease. Good. A little fear keeps you sharp. Think about it, but I'm serious. We could make a real go of this. They hashed out some preliminary ideas right there, brainstorming into the afternoon. The thought of co-owning a business was huge, but with Linda by her side, it felt possible. The next few weeks, Emily dove into preparations, hiring, training new staff, and overseeing the salon operations became part of a larger plan. Their clients noticed the positive changes, and the buzz was infectious. Linda and Emily spent evenings at a local cafe, laptops open, plants sprawling across the table. They talked leases, decor, branding, every detail of their expansion. Finally, the day came to announce their plans to the staff. Everyone gathered around, excited and a bit anxious about the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda started, her voice booming with pride. Thanks to your hard work, and especially Emily's leadership, we're expanding. And Emily here isn't just going to be your boss, she's going to be my partner in this venture. We're in this together. The team cheered, and Emily felt a swell of pride and determination. This was her shot, their shot, to build something lasting. It had been seven years since the divorce, and life had moved on. Emily was in one of her salons, chatting with Mrs. Peterson, an elderly client who loved getting her hair done there every month. They were laughing about something trivial when the door swung open, and there he was, her ex-husband, Mark, with Anna, the same woman he had left her for. Emily stiffened, but before she could say a word, Mark burst out laughing, loud enough for everyone in the salon to hear. Look at this. Emily has become just a simple hairdresser. What a waste of all that fancy education. Anna chimed in, her voice dripping with disdain. Yeah, what a total loser. 
Guess the high-flying job didn't work out, huh? The room fell silent, the air thick with tension. Emily felt every eye in the place on her, waiting to see how she'd respond. But before she could gather her thoughts, Mrs. Peterson stood up from her chair, her cape still draped around her. She pointed a manicured finger at them, her voice sharp as an attack. You two ought to shut your mouths. This woman here, she waved her hand at Emily, owns not only this salon but a whole chain of them. She was just named one of the most successful young entrepreneurs in the country. Mark's laughter died in his throat. He looked like he'd been slapped. Anna's face went from mocking to shocked in an instant. And another thing, Mrs. Peterson continued, her eyes narrowing. I live next door to you clowns, Mark. You're hardly ever sober, and you get fired from your job so often it's a wonder you have any work at all. Mark's face turned beet red, from embarrassment or anger, Emily couldn't tell. He grabbed Anna's arm, muttering something under his breath about leaving as they headed towards the door. Anna suddenly whirled around and stormed back in, Mark trailing helplessly behind her. I want my hair done here, and I want you to do it, Emily, Anna declared, standing defiantly in the middle of the salon, her voice loud, her tone brazen, as if challenging Emily directly. Emily raised an eyebrow, taking in her audacious demand. Sure, I can do that. It'll be $250 for a cut and style with me. Anna's confidence wavered, her eyes widening at the quote. What? I'm not going to spend a quarter of my salary on some hairstyle. Mark, looking defeated and embarrassed, tried to pull her away again. Come on, Anna, let's just go. They left for good this time, with Anna still muttering under her breath about the prices. Emily watched through the window as they got into an old car that looked like it had seen better days. As the days turned into weeks, the incident with Mark became just another story that added to the rich tapestry of Emily's life's unexpected turns. The salons were thriving, and with each passing day, she found more reasons to look forward with optimism rather than backward with any regret. One crisp morning, while Emily was arranging the new line of organic hair care products on the shelves, Linda strolled in, her eyes bright with what Emily knew was another big idea. I've been thinking about how we can expand our brand. What do you think about starting a training academy right here in the salon? We could teach the next generation of stylists, pass on what we've learned. Emily paused, considering the idea. It was bold, like most of Linda's ideas, but it made sense. That sounds amazing. We've got the space, and it could really set us apart from the competition. Emily's mind was already racing with the possibilities. Exactly my thought, Linda clapped her hands, her enthusiasm infectious. And I want you to lead this project, M. You've got the knack for this, and I trust your judgment completely. The idea of leading such a significant new venture was both thrilling and daunting, but Emily felt ready for the challenge. I'd love to, Linda. Really, it means a lot that you trust me with this. They spent the next few hours sketching out what the academy could look like, discussing everything from curriculum to licensing. As they talked, Emily realized how far she had come, from feeling defeated and alone to charting the future of a business she co-owned. Later that day, as she was tidying up after a busy afternoon, one of their regular clients, Mrs. Harper, approached her. She had been coming to the salon since they opened this location and had always shown an interest in the business side of things. Emily, I've been hearing great things about what you're planning, she began, her tone earnest. You know, my granddaughter is finishing school soon, and she's got a real passion for beauty. Maybe she could join your academy? That would be wonderful, Mrs. Harper, Emily said, genuinely pleased. We'd be honored to help her start her journey, once we get everything set up. Let's make sure she's one of the first students. Thank you, Emily, Mrs. Harper beamed. It's young women like you who inspire her. She talks about how you turned things around and made a success of yourself. Hearing that filled Emily with a warm glow of pride and a sense of responsibility. We try to inspire where we can, she replied with a smile. That evening, as she locked up the salon, Emily thought about the future. There was so much potential, so much yet to achieve. The road hadn't been easy, but every challenge had strengthened her, every setback had taught her something valuable.